Hey guys, TJ here from Smallmouth Freaks. Wanted to do a quick video, uh, 2019 recap on what we did most of our damage on this year for, for the bigger fish. Um, pretty much stayed to three waterways this year. So we're based in central Vermont, which puts Lake Champlain right in our backyard, less than an hour's drive for me. So pretty much fished Champlain this year from ice out until midsummer, um, all summer long until the late fall or mid to late fall, we hit the Thousand Islands region, Lake Ontario, St. Lawrence, which is only like four hours from us. We, so we do most of our big smallmouth that we feature have come from there. And then I've been spending some time this late fall uh, up until today was the last day on the water for me here in Vermont because we got <laughs> hammered with 14 inches of snow last night. So And Vermont hardly plows the roads, so I know I'm not going to be able to get to the boat ramps. So we spent, uh, I spent some of the fall on a local pond here in mid, mid uh, central Vermont. It's, it's not really small, it's 3,000 acres. With, for a smaller lake, it's got a massive population of big smallies, big largemouth, and the place is phenomenal. Um, my personal goal, like I said before, is to catch a state record smallie out of there, which I've come close. So um, PB for the year, for me, uh, was a 613 smallmouth, which came from uh, Henderson Harbor area, Lake Ontario. Uh, I did get a seven pound largemouth this year. That's not my PV, but for the year it is. So seven pound largemouth, 613 smallie. Uh, still trying to beat my wife. <laughs> my wife's got a seven and three quarter pound smallie from actually Champlain. So haven't been able to beat that yet. So I've got some lures laid out on the table here. What I want to do is uh, it's actually not that big of a uh, array of lures that I've used for the year that I've done most of my my work with so what I'll do is I'll start with what I've used from early spring uh, on Champlain and then go right into what I've ended the season with so like I said I fished Champlain starting at uh, ice out all the way up until probably July um, started the year the water we had a lot of high water this early spring so a lot of flooded backwaters on Champlain which if you guys have never fished Champlain before, the flooded backwaters in the spring, phenomenal. F just phenomenal. Uh, there's a bunch of them in the southern part. So those of you, there's probably a lot of guys here that have, have fished Champlain before. Those of you that haven't, it's like two lakes in one. The southern part is more of a largemouth, dominated by the largemouth. Shallower, a uh, little bit stained water, a lot more weedy, you know, weed lines, trees. Once you start getting to the northern part of the lake, the smallmouth tend to take over. Although the last couple of years, there's some big large mouth have been moving in. So the uh, started the year in the southern part of the lake for largemouth. Um, fishing the flooded backwaters. Most of my damage, I'm, my, my buddies are going to hate me because I'm giving away some secrets, but there's no secrets on Champlain anymore. And I don't fish that many tournaments anymore, so I don't care. Kitek. If you guys have never fished Kitek jigs before, pick them up, try them out. Um, half ounce. I, I generally stick with a half ounce and I use two colors. Black and blue and then green pumpkin. That's it. And what I'll do is I'll mix match. I'll do a green pumpkin Rage Craw trailer on my black and blue jig. And then vice versa on the green pumpkin. I use a black and blue uh, Rage Craw trailer on that. Getting up, getting that boat up into those flooded timbers, those backwaters as far as you can get, mandarin in, in between all them trees, and just pitching up into them tree stumps. Uh, once that water temperature hit 50, those large mouth were just piled in there. It was insane. I've had some luck with shallow cranks in there too, but it's tough because it's such condensed areas. Uh, but that jig was the ticket. Uh, ended up doing that pattern in the first term of the year was the first, uh, I don't know if it was a BFL or ABA, I don't remember, but ended up making a 70 mile run to the northern end of the lake, Champlain, looking for smallies, and I got there and there was like six people on my spot, literally turned back around 70 miles back, um, fished a couple of flooded backwaters and ended up saving the day with 17 pounds of largemouth, just ran out of time, I probably could have done 20 pounds, but 
just ran out of time. So think about that if you guys are new and planning a trip coming up to Champlain. Springtime, flooded backwaters, uh, it's, it's where it's at. So moving on from there, um, went up to the northern part of Champlain, um, probably the early part of early to mid-May up until June-ish when the first tournament started. Uh, and this was the ticket right here, guys. A-Rig. Everybody knows the A-Rig. So on Champlain, we're only allowed to use two hooks. So I've got it rigged with three, three dummies or three uh, attractors and then two hooked uh, baits. I use Kitex. I use 2.8s as my trailers and then 3.3s or 3.8s as the, uh, the targets. You can see they're different color. And they're on the bottom, so it's keel weighted, so it runs a little evenly. Uh, but the smallies hammered this thing. I mean, they hammered the snot out of it. Uh, one other thing I used up there for the smallies, jerkbait. Uh, I know it's kind of hard to see this color, but this is a six cents provoke. I don't know the actual name of the color, uh, but one trick I did is, if you can see that center hook, I changed it to a red hook. And they just targeted that hook and they just smashed this thing. I mean, I went through, I think, three of these this year because they were hitting it so hard. So that, between that and the A-Rig, Northern Champlain did a lot of damage. Uh, actually got on some largemouth this year on northern part of Champlain, which I don't usually target. When I go, for me, when I go to the northern part of Champlain, it's for the large, or for the smallies, I'm sorry. So, but I did end up getting on a pot of some big largemouth, and they are getting bigger up there. So whatever them boys are eating, they're getting bigger. So let's move on to Ontario. Thousand Islands, St. Lawrence River, the mighty St. Lawrence. Everyone sits right now. I mean, Bassmasters is number one water and waterway for smallmouth. Um, place is incredible. Last August, uh, my wife and I have been going up there for 15 years. We do probably four, five, six trips a year up there. Uh, last August, first time in my life, I did a 30 pound, two ounce, five fish bag of smallmouth uh, in one spot. She did 27 pounds in the same spot from the back of the boat at the same time. The place is incredible. I caught six, six pound largemouth that day, or largemouth, smallmouth that day, six of them. I've never done that in my life. The place is, they're just growing at a rapid rate. Um, just hoping that place can sustain that because it's been getting a lot of tournament pressure in the last couple years and we all know how that goes. So, so if you guys have never been to Thousand Islands before, Lake Ontario region, Drop shot. Drop shot's the king. Um, I've got a couple other tricks I'll show you that I use up there, but drop shot is the king up there. Usually going to be fishing the brakes, the brake lines. Um, I generally fish 25 to 40 feet of water up there. You can catch them shallower, but I, I tend to stay in the deeper water. Uh, for me, i found that those deeper fish are less affected by the weather patterns up there. Uh, I pretty much stick to... The new power bait, the Berkeley Max Scent, which is um, the flatworm, and is incredible. I've been using this for a couple years since it came out. I use very few colors. Uh, this one here is a natural shad color. It's kind of hard to see it, but it's like a brownish. To me, it almost imitates a goby. I use black, straight black, and Berkeley Gulp leeches, black. Pretty much stick to those three baits. I have a few other colors that I use, but uh, I'm going to keep those to a secret for now. But that's really all I do. Three eighths. I generally use three eighths uh, drop weight. Three eighths to half ounce. Um, I usually don't go any less than a foot, 12 inch leader on my drop shot. 12 to 14 inch seems to be the best for the river up there. Uh, I found this about the same on the lake. Um, there are areas where you can go with a heavier weight, no doubt, 5 eighths, 3 quarter ounce weight. Uh, but I come up with a couple other tricks for that. So, drop shot rules up there. I go up there, I have three or four drop shot rigs set up. One other thing I, charged, I started experimenting with, in, with this year up there. Uh, everyone's heard of the Tokyo rig. There it is right there. Straight shank hook, 3 up. 
Um, I got this trick actually from watching the guys on Wired to Fish, and I was like, that's a good idea. Tokyo Rig Swim Bait. I've got two 3 8 ounce tungstens on there, a little clacking sound. So I started with this late this late fall. I didn't have to get a lot of time on it with it up there, but the Shimo Bay area. Uh, I figured I'll try this out in a little bit deeper water. Something they haven't seen too much down there in the deep water. Um, and I ended up whaling them. I mean, they just jumped on this thing. I used pretty much two colors. I used the uh, Kitek IU. That's a 3.8 IU. And then I'll use the um, Sexy Shad or, yeah, it's a Sexy Shad color. But that was that was a trick. That thing was phenomenal. I'm throwing it on 17 pound line on a 7.6 medium heavy rod. I think it's, seven, yeah, 7.6 seven, medium heavy rod. 17 pound fluorocarbon just launching that thing, letting it hit the bottom, and just super slow rolling it. And the smallies, the big, I didn't get a lot. I will say I did not get a lot of fish on this. But the ones I did were big. So not quantity, but quality. That thing was key. Uh, another thing I experimented up there with this year, football head swim bait. Again, Kitek 3.3, sexy shed. It's a 3 8 3 8 ounce football head. Uh, I also used half ounce football head. Using that in between like 10 and 15 feet of water on the flats or on the humps, just launching it out, letting it hit the bottom and just super slow rolling it. It's kind of a weird hit. They'll come up behind it and just you'll feel just a little tick and just lean it back into them and they, they chomp that thing. So, set three eighths, half ounce football head, small swim bait, that's no, nothing new. Uh, another one I, this is a standby for me. I mean, it's old standby, I use this everywhere I go. This is the Kai Tech uh, Easy Shiner. Four inch easy shiner on a quarter inch swim bait head. Same deal. Chuck it out there, slow roll. I usually use this under 10 feet of water. Um, you can use it in a deeper water too. It's just got a really slow sink rate. So in the cold water, this thing has been dynamite for me. Everyone's heard of the screw head. Mega Bass Okashira screw head. Made famous mostly by Chris Aldane, but this thing is phenomenal. Um, I just started experimenting with him this year. Didn't have much luck in the springtime with him, uh, but late fall I went back up to Northern Champlain looking for some smallies, and this thing was key. Uh, had a hard time getting them on the crank, had a hard time getting them on a regular swim bait. Tied this thing on, and I don't know if it was just the vibration that it puts off or the water displacement, but they crunched that thing. And all I'm doing is I'm ringing it with a 2.8 uh, Kitek. Actually, this is, um, I'm sorry, that's a 2.8. That's a Bass Pro Shops brand uh, swim bait, which is very similar to the Kitek. Just a little bit, uh, a little bit tougher material. It's not as soft. It seems to last a little bit longer with the small lease. Uh, let's see, what else we got? So now we're going into the late, late fall. Uh, swim bait fishing this year for me. I started picking up some bigger swim baits, watching um, Oliver Nye on Big Bass Dreams and the Mega Bass Mag Draft and mag slow and all that stuff so I bought a bunch rigged them up um, the local lake that I've been fishing here in central Vermont is got a huge population of uh, five to seven inch perch and it's loaded with trout so I ended up getting six inch mag draft in the trout pattern rigging it up with a couple stinger hooks and uh, went out there I only had two trips out with this thing but literally the first cast six pounds molly um, later that day, I ended up getting a five, a six, and a seven pound largemouth in the same spot, slow rolling this thing. Um, so if you guys think that these things are big for up here in north, the northeast, I'm going to go even bigger. I ordered a bunch more seven and eight inch ones. I'm going to try those out next year and experiment with them. Uh, and I'm looking forward to getting up to Thousand Islands next year with these things for the smallies. I think the smallies will hammer these things. So... Give them a shot. Get out there and get a couple. They're not that expensive. And try them out. You'd be surprised. I'm addicted to it. I'm not going to lie. Once once I caught a couple of fish on this thing, on these things, I'm addicted to it. I can't stop. So I ended the season on our local lake here. I uh, did a little short little video uh, a week back or so about it. Blade baits. 
Everyone knows blade baits, especially up here in the northeast, once that water temp hits the 50s, uh, low 50s, 40s, down into the 30s. Blade baits rule. You can't beat them. That's all I went out with. I did try the, the big swim bait, and I actually did get a large mouth on this thing in 40 degree water. I was kind of surprised, but blade baits rule. Uh, I use only a couple of brands. These are the Johnson Thin Fishers. Um, I use three colors basically the perch, the gold, and then uh, silver, which I ran out of silver, so that's the three. Uh, the other brand I like is these Bass Pro Shops, the XPS Bass Pro Shops ones. Uh, they've got a nice vibration to them, a little bit different shape, uh, but a really nice vibration to them, and they're cheap. They're four bucks a piece. I don't like spending a lot of money on blades because the lakes that I fish them in up here, you lose average five day, five a day, five a trip, five to ten because they're so rocky and so snaggy, uh, the way we're fishing them in the areas we're fishing them. So I don't spend a lot on blade baits. Um, one other trick is the Rapla, the wrap, uh, wrap, rip and wrap. So this is a half ounce Rapla rip and wrap. You can use these the same way as a blade bait. Um, I fish them on bait casting rods. It's a 6'10", a 7 foot medium crankbait rod basically on 12 pound or 14, 14 pound fluorocarbon. Launch it out as far as I can. Um, I fish it two ways. Launch it out, let it sink to the bottom, make a short hops back to the boat, or once you find some fish on your graph, just drop it straight down. Um, what I'll do is I'll keep two rods rigged up, one with the blade and then one with the uh, rip and wrap. And if they're not hitting this, I try this just to give it a mix. And I keep the color simple on this too. It's this, the uh, chrome shad or a perch color. Uh, that's about it. So, not a whole lot of lures used this year, guys. And uh, we, we put the screws to them this year. Um, biggest bag, uh, smallmouth this year up on Thousand Islands for me was probably 27 pounds. Uh, biggest bag of largemouth this year was on Champlain, actually, which was about 23 pounds. Um, so, just to recap, you see all my junk behind me. I emptied out the boat yesterday before the snowstorm. Gonna have to go through it, get ready for next year. But stay tuned. We're gonna try to uh, this whole video taping and all this technology stuff is new to us. So we're gonna try to get some better equipment, get some better videos out to you guys. So if you like what you see, subscribe. Uh, check us out on Instagram at Smallmouth Freaks, uh, TJ Stan Bass Fishing, or Bass Girl Fishing. Um, we're gonna try to get some more stuff to you next year. I hate ice fishing, but I'm going to try to get out ice fishing this year. Maybe get a couple of videos for you. But All right. Thanks, guys. Be good.